Hello, I'm back with another session where I'll be working on designing this week's infographic. And this week's infographic will be based on an episode of Let's Talk About Brand. And it's going to be talking about micro niches and how to market to micro niches. So what I did was I this week I, I used AI to try to help power it through. And so what I did is I listened as I was listening to the podcast, I had otter.ai running. It did a full transcript of it. I then took that transcript and dumped it into ChatGPT, asked it to give me the, the highlights, and then I asked it to give me the highlights in a different uh, order, which is the why, how, what storytelling method, the Simon Sinek method. So once I have that and I've got my notes over here, now I can start digging in. One of the things that I did a little bit earlier already was I started looking at uh, fonts and typefaces. So I went to Adobe Fonts and I found this one that I like. It, it's kind of got a, a little bit of a 60 psychedelic type vibe to it, but the, the typeface is actually called, it's the number eight. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen with this. Let's move that out of the way. Let's move this over. Make sure we're on the content layer and we can get started. So as usual, I'll be starting with the title area. All right, so both of these, I want to adjust the, the paragraph style and then align the objects. They're aligned with each other, group them and center it again. Both open, but you know what? This is such a fun, typeface that I think I want to play with it a little more. So these are all kind of straight lines and this this is this is actually a different typeface that I was considering, but it's a little bit harder to read than this one. So what I was thinking is breaking this up a little bit. So I'm going to convert those to outlines and then just start playing with these a little. Need to be in the white arrow in order to adjust each one of these individually. Now let's just make that a little more fun. So this, I think we could I would go like this, and you know what? I'm going to. Let me do. What I did there was I copied it, I cut it, I pasted it in front, and I grouped it. So now this is one group, and this is a separate group. Mimic what we did with marketing and make that M large. Maybe rotate that back a little bit. Just mess with these a little bit more. And as usual with something like this, I don't know if this is going to end up working at all. Might just throw the whole thing out, but it doesn't hurt to play around, right? At this point, I haven't figured out colors. You know, it's still the same yellow that I had in last week's. But I think what I want to do, what I'm trying to do now is just figure out kind of the general vibe of what this issue is going to look like. No. Is that clear what this is trying to say? put in some lines to help kind of fill in some of the, the blank space that's being created. So 
now this should go a little more like this. But now I can select that and that. Move that up. I don't know. As of now, I'm not loving it. But you never know when it's going to start to start to work out again. I could probably use another one of these under here. I'm wondering if I want to Just this one. So it works more like that. You know what? Let's just play with it, see what happens. <laughs> That's not great. My lines aren't great. That's the reason why. All right. Again, really rough. make sure that we're going to make it the right size. And that looks pretty good. Okay, I don't really like that G a whole lot, but I don't know what my other options are. You know what, this might work better. I know I'm spending way too much time on one silly letter. But this might work better. But we're on the other side. Let's reflect it. Pull it over here. Now we're going to Fake this in here. All right, that is starting to come together a little bit. So do that so I can delete that. Group that. Goodbye to you. Pull this up here. All right. That was way too much work to try to fix one kind of lousy letter. And that that's one of the tough things about typefaces like this is, is you get some really good letters and some really bad letters. So one of the things I always try to do is figure out, okay, if I'm going to use this, is it worth the extra effort that it's going to take to, to actually use this typeface? I made the mistake at one company a few years ago where I found a cool typeface I liked, we made the, the official font of the company, and I needed to adjust the kerning every single time. It was such a pain. But one of the things I'm looking at here is I wonder, do these have these ligatures built in? And they do not. So a little bit of false advertising here. This is not even the right typeface. It is. Okay, I guess that works. But you can see that even in their their nice little example here, they faked it. Like, okay, we can see this G is much better than that G. So, so that tells me, tells me this typeface is 
It's like, yeah, this is a cool example because they actually went and customized a lot of these things. Oh, that. Okay, if I look at this, let's try something different. Let's try all caps. That works better for me. So I'm going to delete that. Pull this up. Outline it. Enlarge this. And start pulling things around. This is again, no rhyme or reason. But you don't want to get into too much of a pattern. So that's why, you know, I'm going down, up, down, up, down, down. Here, rotate. I probably want to rotate this one a little bit too. Hmm. Again, this is a tough one. You know, I want to see if piling these up makes it work a little better. Now the tricky part of piling these up is you can't lose the defining characteristics of what makes that letter that letter. You know, so the K, I still need it to be able to see that it's different pieces. That might not work great. That's actually not too bad. Almost creates a cool effect like that. And now it makes me think what I do with these. nice marketing, wouldn't it? All right, let's move here down. All right, let's line this in the middle. Let's align this in the middle. And I think we might have it. This right now is a little uneven because the M is so much larger than that. G. So now I probably need just like, you know, at some point some kind of like swirls or something. But that will be a future element. Okay, so I think, let's save that, and let's start working on our colors. Let's unlock our background, and then select all of that yellow color. Turn that kind of pukey green, hmm. Is what colors? No. Uh, 
uh, what colors do we want to use? So, so because it, it's a little bit of like, okay, we've got this green, now what? So let, let me bring over color.adobe, which is great because what it can do, turn this back to RGB. I was working on a book cover recently, so I needed some CMYK. I feel like this brownish, this like burnt orange browns and everything. That's got some potential. Why don't I do that? And you know what? I'm going to be, I know there are like official ways to do this, but I'm gonna, just going to be quick and lazy with it because you don't want to watch me deal with that stuff. All right. So, swatches. Aren't working. Why not? What's hidden over here? Okay. Select all unused and throw those out. So there's still some elements left over from my previous infographic that I haven't thrown out yet, but we'll get there. And we won't need a dot pattern because we had that last time. Okay. So, got this color. All right, so now we have our swatches that we want to play with. Let's relock that, grab this. No. Mm -hmm. All right, here's something I don't do often, but it's all about experimenting, right? All right, I had the wrong thing selected. I'm trying to select all of that and copy behind. Is dark. Pull that down. How does that look? Not loving the background, but I think we might be onto something here. Copy behind. Stroke. Yeah, it's 17 last time. We'll go down from here because it's a smaller type. Copy behind. So much is dark and down. Ooh, I know what I can do. That might be cool. All right. So we've got this color here, right? And now let's do a really light version there. And again, might work, might look awful, but let's find out. With this style, part of me wants to make just really bad gradients. I know what I can do. Uh, turn that back to normal. Copy behind, do the light color, and pull it up a little bit. So now that creates this kind of ledge almost. With that the optics of a ledge. And if we have, want to have more fun with it, copy behind down. Copy 
time dark okay I think we've got something now it is coming along a bunch of colors that you wouldn't think would look good together but not that bad right now. So let's make sure we save that. All right. So this, so basically what I was trying to do here with this is I want to do is confused okay so this allows me to kind of have a little bit of almost a plastic effect on it so what i did is i put a really subtle gradient in here and now if i wanted to add it to this i would have to outline this command shift o and then adjust that This almost looks like it's glowing off the edge, which is a cool effect. I wonder what would happen. If we did pull this in. And do okay. Let's get a color effect, stylize outer glow, change the color. Okay. No, that that should be a brighter color coming off of there. So properties, outer glow, select that. See how that looks this week. So that actually makes my whole infographic a little smaller, the area that I can use in there. But yeah, let's try it. Okay, relock. Okay, so now, so now what we want to do is start blocking out the areas that we want. So we've got seven points, seven points that we want to talk about. just by drawing out these boxes I wonder does it almost turn into a comic booky Brady Bunch type thing which was definitely not what I was starting with but you never know what's gonna pop up do that Just easily flip these. If I wanted to, so that would be our seven spots. Do 
do a really short infographic this week. So we've had some text here. Kind of explains what we're going to be, that intro is what we're going to be talking about. With these, what we could actually do is copy behind, put in a unique double drop shadow. Mix it up a little bit. I probably should have done this before I duplicated everything. trying to do here is, nope, I want it to be different. All right, so what I don't want is the pattern of having light, this kind of light pink running down the side, and I don't want the light pink to be the default drop shadow to this square, or rectangle rather. So what I want to do is copy paste behind. I wonder if I should get one of those programs that allows you to see which which keys I'm hitting. Because I use a lot of shortcuts and I often forget to, I don't think to say what they are. So that's something I might want to look into at some point. All right, so I've got seven content blocks here. is figure out what the content in these blocks will look like. So I think I'm going to want a title, probably some sort of picture, if we can skew, and then a little description of what we're talking about. So the copy that was given to me from ChatGPT is longer than this, but I'll just have to figure that out. All right, so we're going to look at these. So this will actually have like a really narrow image. So, and of course, obviously the tricky part with this is as you're rotating things, you can only do so much, you know, like you can only rotate things one way or the other. And this one, oh, here's what I could do. Nice big picture. Here's where I'm going to borrow what was already done, even though I then went back and readjusted these. So it's not super helpful. Sorry, my dog's going to be barking a lot for the next couple of minutes. He's little and sometimes a jerk, but we love him. Okay, 
think this is kind of coming along. But of course, we're going to run into a situation where the type doesn't fit. For an agency years ago and the style guide for the agency was nothing is hyphenated and ever since then it, it's just kind of the way I work sure that all my copy is consistent. So for example, the copy that I received, which was what uh, sustainable growth, but everything else has an ing, you know, understanding, focusing, aligning, being. So I think that is good. We're gonna save that. This is gonna go along faster than I expected. But of course, what I still need to do is wordsmith these things, put in background textures, swirls, something, and then find some sort of imagery for each one of these. Which considering this style is gonna be tricky. So I would imagine I'm probably going to want to do uh, some sort of vector images. But I need to find something that, that fills in this area. So I use a, a platform called FreePick. Which obviously is not free. I, I pay for it. Uh, well, some of the images are free, but it, it's it's worth the price. All right. So I'm going to want vectors, not assets. I don't know. Okay. Vectors, and I want some sort of let's see, it'd be background. That's way too much. But there might be something in here. That can work. Do I want to go full flower child? Don't think so. I want that. There's still some modern aspects to this, so I don't want to go full hippie. Maybe it's just swirls. Oh yeah, no, that's that's not right. I was gonna say floral because I kind of like that. You know, are there smaller elements like this that might work? That's cool. That's a vector. You know what? Let's see. Oops. We're getting back. 
Let's recaps. Probably too hippie-ish for what I'm looking for. But open that up and then so ideally let me guess these things are not separated out okay so select the whole thing and do we have any other of this color in the document I do why okay let's lock our footers whatever's available here okay so the reason I do that is because eventually I'm going to divide this whole thing and I want to be able to just select same fill color to delete it great find elements that will tie these two pieces together. Alright. Copy. Yeah, I'm still gonna have this big pipe going up Main Street here. What could work? What could work? breaking this thing. What I'm trying to do is see, is there something is there something that'll let me come around and kind of fill that space? That's the thing I don't know. Because this, I don't like this. If I do this, I'll need to you know, let's make a copy of this just in case I really screw this up. All right, 
So this copy behind, and I'm going to do stroke. Curve it, object, path, outline stroke. I'm going to pull this part in, pull this part out. And bring it to the front. Pathfinder. Ooh, I don't want to use this color because I won't be able to select it. Perfect. Cut that. Select my magenta. Delete it all. Lock that. Select. Select one of these areas. How? Oh, All right. Select the fill color. And what we're going to see is a ton of these little areas that were left behind. Group that. Now we should go to our texture layer. Front. It's going to actually be interesting with. down. It's a little too dominant. What is over here that I can't click on? doing things with transparency. But actually what we can do, I know how to fix this. Do 100%, 100%. Smush them together. Group. And group that and then work on the transparency. And once we adjust the transparency, now it's a unified experience. So, yeah, but 
Okay. Okay. Uh, copy that down again. It's going to be way more than enough. Okay, group the whole thing and then pull that down. You know what we should do? So I'm going to lower this even more. But what I just thought about is these drop shadow type things. I gotta figure out what's going on with this. I don't like having dead spots on my screen. Multiply. Yeah, so then we're getting that one. Mm. So I like the idea of this because then you kind of can see through it. But it doesn't work for the lighter colors, right? If you multiply, it's not going to work. So let's just lower the opacity. So just trying to remember what I did because I just did a whole bunch of different things in different areas. So I did multiply plus 50% and then maybe 50% and 50%. I got to lock my texture layer because I don't want to keep clicking on that. All that stuff. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. So I need to wrap up for the evening, so I'm going to save. But if you have any questions about this, please let me know. And uh, this week I'll try to post um, the second section also. All right. Thanks, everyone.